There's a place rich with life where every way will purify. Take me there to be with you. Take me to the river. There's a place deep with hope to saturate. to the river, pull me off a shore, here within your freedom, I have found my reason, I am yours, as I wait in the swell, you sweep away.
the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 11th chapter. When they were approaching Jerusalem and Bethphage and Bethany, near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, Why are you doing this? Just say this, The Lord needs it, and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, What are you doing untying the colt? They told them what Jesus had said, and they allowed him to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was already late, he went out to Bethany with the twelve. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the, the highest. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who shines in glory, clothes us in compassion, and bears gifts of mercy for all. Amen. Amen. The story of faith is a story of courage. It, it took, took courage for John the Baptist, Baptist to, to prepare, prepare the, the way. way. It took courage for Mary to say, Here I am, use me. It took courage, courage for, for the, the disciples, disciples to drop their nets and follow Jesus. Jesus. It took courage for the paralyzed man's friends to lower him through the roof. It took courage, courage for, for Peter, Peter to, to walk, walk on, on water. water. It took courage for Zacchaeus to give half of his possessions to the poor. 
It took courage for Jesus to enter Jerusalem on a donkey. Faith has never been easy. It is a journey of courage. Again, again and again, again God, God, show us the way. Let us worship a brave and courageous God. The call to confession. Glennon Doyle, a famous author and writer, frequently uses the phrase, we can do hard things. It's one of her many mottos in life. As a result, this declaration, we can do hard things, has become an anthem for so many. You can buy these words on poster prints, on greeting cards, and even on coffee mugs. These five simple words aren't particularly radical, so when I stop to think about why they have caught hold for so many, I can only assume that it is because life and faith require courage. Vulnerability requires courage. Relationships require courage. Advocacy and justice require courage. Facing our privilege requires courage. Faith requires courage. Even confession requires courage. So friends, let us do hard things. Let us confess together, trusting that God is always there, cheering us on in every courageous act. Let us pray. Family of faith, even when we gloss over the truth, even when our courage fails us, even when we doubt that we can do hard things, God believes in us, God loves us, God forgives us. Hear and believe this truth. We are known, we are loved, we are forgiven, again and again and again. Amen. The Prayer of Illumination. If we could buy our way closer to you, we'd sell everything we have. If we could work our way to you, we'd never take a day off. If we could walk our way to you, we'd keep our tennis shoes on tight. But I know, we know, we cannot buy or work or walk our way closer to you. We must listen our way closer to you. So holy God, as you have so often done again and again, open our ears. Clear out the self-talk that keeps us from you. Dust out the negativity and distractions. Remove any doubt hindering our way. Amen. Amen. The first reading is from chapter Philippians, chapter 2, verses 5 through 11. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness. And being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The second reading is from Psalm 31, verses 9 through 16. Be gracious to me, O Lord, for I am in distress. My eye wastes away from grief, my soul and body also. For my life is spent with sorrow and my years with sighing. My strength fails because of my misery and my bones waste away. I am the scorn of all my adversaries, a horror to my neighbors, an object of dread to my acquaintances. Those who see me in the street flee from me. I have passed out of mind like one who is dead. I have become like a broken vessel, for I hear the whispering of many, terror all around, as they scheme together against me, as they plot to take my life. 
But I trust in you, O Lord. I say, you are my God. My times are in your hand. Deliver me from the hand of my enemies and persecutors. Let your face shine upon your servant. Save me in your steadfast love. Well, hello, everyone. It's so good to be with you this morning, to be gathered. Of course, I am Jesus, and I have just gone through my procession into Jerusalem, and I am joined here by the camel who went through the eye of the needle. Well, hello, everyone. So good to be with you. But I have to say, Jesus, like, I'm totally offended that you didn't ask me when you wanted to ride into Jerusalem. Instead, you had to ask that donkey fellow. I'm like, I could have done a much better job than that donkey. Well, um, Camel, the donkey was supposed to show humility and to fulfill the prophecies. Well, let me say, next time you're going to ride in, let me know before you do so, okay? Because I would like to be the one to carry you into Jerusalem next time. Well, I'm sorry to say, but I kind of promised I would ride the clouds in next time when I come back. You're going to ride the clouds next time? Oh, don't get me thinking about the clouds. I get totally hungry. They're like cotton candy balls floating in the sky. So delicious and scrumptious. Well, I guess if you're going from like a donkey to the clouds, I guess that's a pretty good upgrade. I guess you're moving on up in the world, huh, Jesus? So if you came riding in a donkey and all that, and everybody was cheering you and saying something about the line of David and the ancestors, that means you must be a king, right, Jesus? Yes, actually, it does make me a king. And the people were shouting out. They were so excited because they have gone through so much in their lives. That's why they were shouting out, Hosanna, Hosanna to the king. And Hosanna means save us. They were looking for someone to save them. But as I remember, Jesus, you weren't quite the king that they were expecting. Is that right? That's true. Sometimes as we are being rulers to others, we can actually be servants at the same time. That means that I came not to just rule over people, but to give my life to save others. And actually, you can take that any time that you have a position of leadership or you're called to lead somebody, whether you're in Boy Scouts and you're the leader of the group or you're the older sibling or maybe you're the team captain or the class president or whatever that may be, always remember that this is the model of how we are to lead others through giving of ourselves and service. Well, I just want to say, Jesus, that I promise when I get that cotton candy, I'll be a good leader and direct everyone to the right location to get some more. I might even share a little bit of my own with everybody. Uh, I guess you are learning a little bit, Camel. It's good that you've been listening all this time. But don't forget, our main king is God, the Father who is above all. And let us always give glory to that king. How does that sound? It's a plan, Jesus. All right, everybody. We'll see you next time with Jesus and the camel who went through the eye of the needle. Bye, everybody. Bye. Yes, indeed, the people did not get the king that was expected. They got a king who would be betrayed, who would be pierced through, and eventually lifted up on a cross. Both the gospel reading and the reading from Philippians today remind me of a song by Frank Sinatra. 
in this song, he talks about the highs and lows of life. And we can see in this story of Jesus that Jesus goes from being at the pinnacle to going all the way to the nadir. And if you knew what the word nadir meant, then you are smarter than me because I had to look that one up. But the nadir apparently just means the bottom or the lowest point of something. So we read in Philippians that Jesus went from being equal to God to being a human being humiliated in death, then back up to exaltation with God. Jesus goes through the ups and the downs in our reading from Philippians. We see Jesus in the gospel processional this morning. The people are laying their cloaks on the road, waving their palm branches in the air, shouting with excitement and joy for the king that has come to save them. And of course, we know how the story would turn out. Not too many days later, how they would then turn back against Jesus, yelling, crucify in place of Hosanna. In this song by Frank Sinatra, it's called That's Life. Has anybody heard, of, heard that song? That's Life? Nobody? <laughs> and it goes, says something, I, I don't have a band. I, I feel bad here because uh, Chris got his second vaccine yesterday, and so he's not feeling well at all today, and that's why we have pre-recorded music playing for you this morning. Normally, I would ask them to figure it out and try and jam out on these songs on the fly, but I can read the words for you. It says, that's life. That's what people say. You're riding high in April, shot down in May. But I know I'm going to change that tune when I'm back on top, back on top in June. I said, that's life. That's kind of how we felt around here last March. Everything was going peachy in February, and then boom, March comes around. But maybe things are starting to come around for us once again today, in our day now. And uh, the song continues, says, that's life. As funny as it may seem, some people get their kicks stomping on a dream. But I don't let it, let it get me down, because this fine old world, it keeps spinning around. The psalm today speaks of all the enemies who are plotting to take down the king. They want to take him out of commission. When someone like Jesus is up, guess what? There's always going to be someone trying to bring them back down. Yet, life goes on, despite what we may think. The song continues. I've been a puppet a pauper, a pirate, a poet, a pawn, and a king. I've been up and down and over and out, and I know one thing. Each time I find myself flat on my face, I pick myself up and get back in the race. After the transfiguration, Jesus comes down the mountain, and he ends up healing a boy who was afflicted with the demon. And the father of this boy cries out, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. Sometimes we have so much faith, sometimes we don't have enough. But we still want to have that faith. We still want it. Somehow we need to carry through. But really... God is the one who is carrying us through. One day we might be feeling exhilaration. The next day could be desolation. One day everybody is cheering you on. The next week they're ye yelling, crucify, crucify. What is the Bible's answer for this? Well, we read in Isaiah for today. It goes like this. The Lord God has given me the tongue of a teacher, that I may know how to sustain the weary with a word. Morning by morning he wakens, wakens my ear to listen as those who are taught. The Lord God has opened my ear, and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me, and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. 
Therefore I have not been disgraced. Therefore I have set my face like flint, and I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will, who will declare me guilty. Perhaps in your own life, it's not quite so explicit as people openly mocking or beating you. Perhaps it is. I don't know everybody's complete story, but also this can imply suffering in general and the general ups and downs of life. Sometimes these ups and downs are happening almost at the same time, it seems. I saw a story recently of a young child. I saw this on Facebook. There was a, a news um, brief that was put out, and they did a story about this kid, and both of his parents had died. He had, his father had passed away, and then his mother had passed away, all within the span of about a year or so. And then his aunt was the one who was taking care of him, who was looking out for him. And in this video, they show how this kid had this desire that he wanted to make other people smile. He wanted to go out into the community and find a way to uplift the spirits of his community, of his neighborhood. So what he did in conjunction with his aunt is they would go out and get these little toys. They were like little dinosaur toys or just these, these little cute toys. And then he would go out into the streets, into the community, and he would pass out these toys to people and just say, I just want you to smile I want you to know that you are loved, and I want you to be happy. So the person who's interviewing this kid, he asks him, you know, how many of these have you done? And he says he's done over 600. He's given out over 600 of these little toys to people just to find a way to brighten their day. And then the, the uh, reporter asks him, so are you going to give out more of these? How many do you think you could do? He says he wants to give out 33,000. 33,000 of these little toys. And the reporter asks him, do you think you could do that? He says, yes. Yes, I can do that because I just want to make people smile. It's a sad yet beautiful story all at the same time. The suffering that this young boy was going through, but yet the joy that he still wanted to share with others. I posted it on my own Facebook uh, timeline with uh, saying that it was a sad and beautiful story all at once. And I found an emoji on my phone. Everybody knows what emojis are now, right? Today, to, in today's world, is there anybody that doesn't know what an emoji is? Anyways, it's just a little smiley face or any type of face that shows emotion and you put it when you're typing messages to your friends, whatever. And I found one that has a smile and a tear at the same time. And I felt like that really expressed what this story was talking about. The sadness that this kid was feeling, yet the joy and happiness that he wanted to share. We're called to have supportive words for others, to be a support, to be an encouragement to those who are around us. We're called even to reach out to others who are weary, who are going through difficult times, even from the depths of our own weary souls. And even if there are those who would tear us and everyone down, like the authorities and the people who capitulated to their power, Jesus' own people, and the Romans, for whom this was part of just the routine, the day-to-day -day business of what they had to do to be an empire, for whom what was right was subjective and based on convenience and their earthly power and might. Yes, it is true that the people would turn against Jesus and things would go down, downhill. We even see in Frank Sinatra's song, That's Right, that it kind of ends on a downer, actually. It says, if things don't get better by July, I'm just going to roll up in a ball and die. 
even though Jesus was not the Messiah King that the people wanted, their shouts of Hosanna were still true. That high point with children running up and down the streets, all the excitement that they felt, that was still true. That was still a reality for them. The liberation and the freedom that they needed was still true, and it's still true for us today. Life is like that. We have death and we have life all wrapped up together. We have suffering and we have joy. And they're all a part of our story in the world. Sometimes it seems like it's going crazy. There's so much death and suffering going on. And yet there's so much new life being born and creativity forming the world around us. At the same time, we are called to move forward. That is what faith is trust. That's what belief is all about. To say at the end of the day, you are my God. In you I have trusted. In the midst of it all, to be able to say, blessed be the name of the Lord. In the midst of everything that we have been through and everywhere we are going, to be able to say to Jesus, save us, Lord. We need you to be our king today. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna to the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Amen. Our affirmation of faith. I refuse to believe that I am powerless. 
I refuse to believe that injustice and hatred are simply the way it has to be. I refuse to believe that I am better or more deserving than my neighbor. I refuse to believe that my self-worth is rooted in my accomplishments or appearance. I refuse to believe that the church is dying because I see God all around me. I refuse to believe that the traditions of old are the only path for moving forward. I refuse to believe that I cannot make a difference. So with hope in my heart, I will strive to live a life of courage, conviction, and compassion, just as Jesus taught us. Amen. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. No, oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, virtues of love. Lord of his spirit, wash in his blood. This is my story. Let us pray for the church, the world, and one another. Glory be to you, Lord Jesus Christ. By your cross and precious blood, you have redeemed the whole world. Hosanna, Hosanna in the, the highest. You were acclaimed son of David and son of God by the pilgrims in Jerusalem. Fill your church with faithfulness, boldness, and compassion. Through its witness, cause many to sing, Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the, the highest. You accepted the praise of the crowds who worshipped in Jerusalem. You were greeted with sweet hosannas by little children. Fill this congregation with such love for you that we eagerly worship you, 
humbly do your will and lovingly serve our neighbor in your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You entered Jerusalem as the Prince of Peace. Fill the leaders of the nation with a hunger for peace, a thirst for justice, and a love for the people entrusted to their care. Teach us all to do your will and to long for the day when you return in glory as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You entered Jerusalem on a donkey, not a war horse. Fill all places of violence with your peace. Protect and bless those who stand in harm's way. Bring them safely home to their loved ones. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. You were greeted with joy as you entered the holy city. Fill with joy the hearts of all who suffer in mind, body, or spirit. Especially, we pray for Ning, Russ, Bob, Clyde and Janet, Yvonne and Stan, Artis, George and Karen, and Janine, and all those we name now aloud or silently in our hearts. Turn their sorrow into joy, their suffering into health, and their cries for help into shouts of praise. Fill us with imperishable hope so that we gladly follow where you lead us until you lead us safely home. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Accept our prayers, dear Jesus, and lay them at your Father's throne. Let all that pleases him be done to your glory and the good of your people. Amen. Amen. Let us pray with confidence in the words our living Lord Jesus gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you everybody for joining us on this, this Palm Sunday where we remember everyone shouting out the hosannas and it leads us right into Holy Week. Don't forget, this Thursday and Friday, we have special pre-recorded services. They will be going live on Facebook and on YouTube at 7 p.m. each day. So Thursday and Friday at 7 p.m. And then on Saturday, here at the church, we're actually having an Easter egg hunt. And with a little pre-packaged box lunch and a small craft for all the kids to do as well. So come join us this Saturday for that. Please reach out to Monica Farias, who is, um, go, is setting all that up. Or you can also reach out to the church office if you need more information about that. On Easter Sunday, which is next Sunday, we're going to be having an in-person outdoor worship for our sunrise service at 6.30 a.m., 6.30 in the morning. We're going to be greeting the rising sun with a special service. Come join us for that. We'll also be online, of course, at our regular time of 10 a.m. for our big Easter Sunday worship. And of course, Chris, as I said in my sermon, was feeling some ill effects from his second vaccine. Praise God he was able to get that second vaccine shot and be ready to go for when we come back to in person, which will be on the 18th of April. So we're going to be having a service. We're going to be posting it on Facebook and on YouTube on the 11th. This service was put together by all the synods of our region, five different synods and all the bishops working together to put this service for all the churches. We're going to play that on the 11th. All of the volunteers and everybody will get a break on that Sunday, which they're giving praise in the back for as well. 
And then we will come back for in-person 8 a.m. and 10 a.m. on the 18th. Also, there's going to be on the 11th, right after that pre-recorded service at 11.15, there's going to be a food pickup or food drop-off donation event as well for Pathways of Hope. So that's all happening. All of this excitement is coming up. It's in your newsletter. Be on the lookout for emails and more information about all of that to see how you are going to get involved during Holy Week and the season of Easter, which is almost, almost here. I believe those are all of the announcements. Good. Anybody else going once? Going twice? No, let us close with our Lenten refrain. As you leave this space, may your mouth speak of God's goodness. May your arms hold those in need. May your feet walk toward justice. May your heart find its true worth. May your soul dance in God's grace. And may this be your rhythm again and again and again until God's promised day. In the name of the lover, the beloved, and love itself, go with courage, go with heart, go in peace. Amen. Go in peace, be the light of Christ. Thanks be, be to, to God. God.